Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a how-to video, specifically how to film or how I film fashion reels for Instagram and I'll also go into TikTok a little bit as well. Now I am by no means an expert. I only started doing reels and TikToks very, very recently. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok. I will make sure that my usernames are linked down below. But I really had no idea what to do when I started and I just thought this might be a useful video if you are also quite new to this and you just wanna get some tips and just basically have a beginner's guide to reels and TikToks. So the first step is something very, very easy and something that you are probably used to doing and you don't need any of my help with is doing your hair and makeup. Obviously you want to look professional and presentable for your fashion reel or your fashion TikTok. And then obviously you want to select your outfit. So if you need any help with that, then have a look at my previous videos. But basically you just want to decide on what your video is going to be about and get all of the outfits together for that. So today I'm going to be filming a pajama collection reel, which is a bit of an unusual one. So you may be wondering what equipment you need to film a reel. And basically anyone can film a reel as long as they have a smartphone. Most of us are probably filming reels on our smartphones. We pretty much all own one. And one thing that I would say is definitely really important is to get a tripod. Obviously you could get someone to film for you, but it's gonna be easier. If you just spend 20 or so pounds on a tripod, this will mean that you can just film your reels whenever you are able, rather than having to wait for other people to be available. I have a couple of tripods for my phone. So one only films in like a landscape format. So when I started filming reels, I decided to get a different one, which can be done landscape or portrait. So this comes with its own little ring light, which to be honest, I don't generally use for fashion reels. I tend to use that if I'm like, do my hair and makeup for a reel, that's when I'll pop this on. But normally I'll just pop the tripod on an ironing board, which is another handy little tool or quite a big tool <laughs> for filming reels, something that everyone has got in their house. I like to use an ironing board because it is adjustable. I find that an ironing board is actually a surprisingly useful piece of equipment for filming reels. So this one is from Amazon. I'll make sure that it's linked down below. It's okay. I mean, it's not brilliant. I could get a better one, but it was only about 20 pounds and it does the job. All I really need is for it to just stay in place while I film my outfit. So that is what I use for my phone. And the other way that I sometimes film my reels is to use the camera that I'm filming on now. So this is the camera that I use for my YouTube videos. Excuse the lighting. I am. I have got my little softbox uh, right behind the camera. So the camera itself is not looking very bright, but hopefully you can see that okay. Don't worry about the microphone. You don't need that for reels. Um, well, I mean, if you're talking, you will, but I think most reels people tend to just use music, which I'll show you how to do later. So this camera is a Panasonic, I believe, a GH5S by the look of it. And this is my partner's camera. So this is what I film my YouTube videos on. And I'm very lucky that I'm married to a photographer, so I'm able to use his equipment. And then it's on a um, adjustable tripod as well. Excuse the mess, I've just filmed a haul. And then let's turn this light off so you can see properly. Actually, you can get a better look at the camera now. So another piece of equipment that I use is my softbox. This is also from Amazon. I think this was around the 50 to 70 pound mark. And again, it's not brilliant. You can't adjust the brightness or anything. You can't make it like cool lights or warm lighting, which actually you can do with that little phone tripod that I showed you. But it is really handy. It doesn't have a particularly long lead. So I just plug it into an extension lead. Yeah, nothing very special about this. The only thing that I will say with this is it's quite important to pull it back quite far away from you, sort of as far as it will go in the room. Otherwise it can make you look really, really overexposed. And I do find that having a second light source is really handy. So I wanted to film in natural light today, but it's a very gray, dull, miserable day. So I used my softbox as well, but often I will pop on my big light as well, um, just for a second light source. Really, this is my setup for YouTube, but as I've just filmed a YouTube video, I'm going to keep this camera set up and the softbox light on, and I'm going to film my reel on this camera today. It's nearly time to start filming your reel at last. But first of all, you want to have a little think about the space around you. So obviously background is really important. It's nice if you can have a few kind of props around you. If you've got some lovely prints on your wall, if you've got a lovely coloured wall that you can use, then excellent. I painted every single wall in this house white, <laughs> with the exception of, I think, two walls. So I don't have that much 
pretty space around me. So what I tend to do is I just grab my fake flowers from my wedding that live on my dressing table and I just kind of move those around so that they're somewhere in the frame and I just feel like that makes everything look that little bit more glam and pretty. A lot of people do have open rails like this one in the background as well. I don't generally use it for reels. I do use it for my YouTube videos but I just feel like it's a bit busy and also where it is, I mean it has got wheels, I could move it, but where it is I feel like the camera just doesn't do as good a full body shot as it does if I stand over there. But you can work with whatever space you've got, the main thing is that it's tidy, you don't have to go out and buy a load of beautiful decennio prints or like a retro telephone or whatever people tend to use in their reels. I, uh, when I'm filming my reels, tend to stand in between my dressing table and my little bookcase and on the other side of my bookcase is an ironing board and my suitcase so that's obviously not as pleasing to the eye so I try to make sure that's not in the frame before I start filming and also I have a lot of wires trailing under the dressing table so I have to kind of disguise them and make sure they're not in the shot as well so that's the most important thing is just to make sure that there's nothing unsightly and make sure that it is a tidy and uncluttered space and then it doesn't really matter if you haven't got loads of beautiful props around you. Right so I have changed into my first set of PJs my very cute pair from its head baker they're quite old now but its head baker still do gorgeous PJ so I will link the um, brands for all the pajamas that I show in this video today down below. I just wanted to quickly show you my framing for my reel. So I stand, as I said, generally in between my little bookcase and my dressing table. I've done some jiggery pokery and hid some wires under the dressing table but to be honest by the time this video goes onto Instagram it is going to be cropped so I feel like a lot of that dressing table nonsense will be cropped out. You can also see my ironing board in the uh, your top right hand <laughs> corner of the screen, I think it's my top left, but again that will be cropped out so don't worry too much about your framing but just make sure that it is uncluttered and there's nothing too unsightly. If it is kind of at the side of your screen and you're filming on a camera that's not a huge problem. If you're filming on your phone in portrait then obviously you do need to make sure that there's nothing unsightly anywhere because that is how your video is going to look when it ends up as an Instagram reel. I keep talking about Instagram reels but all of these will work for TikTok. TikTok as well and when I come to actually posting I will talk about how to post on TikTok as well as how to post on Instagram. Okay so now it's time to film and this is the part that's really hard for me because I don't have my glasses on <laughs> so I'm trying to look in the viewfinder and check that you can see all of me um, but I can't really tell what you can see because it's too far away. <laughs> but basically you want to film a few little poses and what I like to get out of the way first is the transition shot which I think is the bit that people are concerned with how to do but to be honest this style of transition is very very easy to film and to edit which is why I tend to go for it because I don't want to do anything more complicated. I'm not that clever at <laughs> editing videos. I'm wearing my Ted Baker pyjamas and I want to transition magically into my Boo Avenue pyjamas. These ones are I believe still available to buy so again they'll be linked down below. So you want to film a few of the transitional shots so that you've got some choices in case you do it a little bit wrong. I mean I haven't really found that I've done it <laughs> wrong and I gen generally just use the first transition shot that I filmed but you want to have some options. So if you want to be in your outfit hold up part of the next outfit that you're going to transition into, give them a little wiggle, do a little dance and then just whack it against yourself and obviously you want to hold it where they're going to be when you're in the outfit. So if you're holding up a pair of trousers you want to hold them as if they are on your legs. So I'm just going to film that a few times and then I'll do a few little poses in this set of pyjamas that I'm currently wearing and then I'll get changed into this pair of pyjamas and I will finish off the transition shot. Here I am in my next pyjama outfit, this lovely pair of dark blue satin pyjamas from Boo Avenue. One thing that I must mention before I forget is um, something I quite often forget to do which is to reopen the curtains once I've got changed. Obviously when I'm getting changed I close the curtains because I don't want to be putting on a beep show but um, the curtains really do make a difference, they give you a second light source. So I'm now going to finish off that transition shot, do a few poses and then I will also film the first part of the next transition shot into my purple pyjamas. Okay so get yourself in frame again and do a few poses. You can mix it up as well, do a few shots like mid shot of the pyjamas so you can see things a little bit closer, you can see the little BX for Boo Avenue on the pocket there which almost makes it look like a monogrammed a pair of pyjamas and then we're going to film the transition shot now that will make it look as if we just popped magically this navy blue set of pyjamas on. So remember before we were holding these pyjamas, I do feel like it's really obvious that these pyjamas are a little bit too small for me, they were already a bit too small for me and then 
I have not stopped eating, so they are definitely too small now. But yes, yeah, so before we were holding this pair of pyjamas here and doing this, we're basically just gonna do this. So that when we edit it, our arms won't just be flailing around when we have apparently supposedly just done this and magically put our trousers on. You can do it a couple of times if you want to. You can do a little ta-da moment as well but that is all you really need to do to finish off the transitional shot. We have filmed our reel or our TikTok and now it's time to edit it. So obviously if you have filmed your video on your mobile then you can just use a mobile editing app. I haven't personally found any mobile video editing apps that I can really get along with. A lot of people have recommended InShot but I just don't really like it. So I use my laptop, even if I'm editing something that I filmed on my phone, I still transfer it to my laptop and edit it on iMovie, which is free software with Mac. If you have a PC, then Movie Maker, I believe is the equivalent. So if you're very new to this, then definitely use the free software that comes with your existing laptop, if you have a laptop. And then obviously you can always go for something fancier further down the line, like, Premiere Pro or Final Cut, but I found that iMovie works perfectly well for my purposes. So I'm not editing the pyjamas reel that I just filmed because obviously I'm still using my camera to talk to you guys. So I'm going to edit some try on clips from the ASOS haul that you will have seen last week. You may remember it was a bit of a fail, um, but yeah, I will show you how I edit my reels now using iMovie. Okay, so I've imported my clips into iMovie. So the first thing that you want to do is right click on the clip that you're working with and then click detach audio. And then you can select the audio and just use the backspace key and that will delete that. So now it will play and there will be no sound. So obviously you don't want any sound competing with your music on the reel. So let's ignore the part where I'm talking. So we want to cut all of that out and then eventually, I'm um, hopefully, unless this is the wrong clip, I think this might be the wrong clip. Yeah, okay, we're not using this clip. Right, let's get rid of that. All right, let's try this one. So again, detach audio and delete. You can zoom in as well so that you can work a little bit easier. Right, so I found the part where I stopped talking and start posing. So you want to find the bit that you want to get rid of and then you can right click and click split clip and then that will split the whole clip into two clips and you can just delete one. So now I'm left with the posing portion. I want to find the clips that I want to use. Poses where I look a little bit happier. <laughs> I do have a bit of a resting bitch face. And I found that about a 1.5 second clip is quite nice before you edit to the next pose. Okay, I think that's fine. We don't need masses of clips for one outfit because obviously a reel is 30 seconds long so you want to fairly speedily go through the outfits. So let's use the next clip. I won't show you the editing of the entire video. This is that awful purple jumper that just shows everything. I'm just going to speed through the rest of the editing process and then I will come back and show you how we actually post to Instagram and TikTok. So we have nearly finished editing and it, we are at 31 seconds. So obviously a reel has to be 30 seconds or less. And I found that sometimes when you explore, it can end up being a little bit longer for some reason. So I try to get my reels at this stage down to probably about 27 seconds. So I'm just gonna find a few little clips that can be taken out and then I will export my video. Okay, so we've got it down to 26 seconds, which is perfect. But now that we've done that, we can export. So we go up to this little symbol here, this share icon, and then click export file. And we'll just call it ASOS Reel, and then we click save. So you can see this little, almost like a clock symbol here that's going round. And when it reaches the 12 o'clock point, that's when your video will be ready. Okay, for some reason it didn't that time, but <laughs> it says share successful. So I think we're fine now. So if we click out of projects, and then if I go to my Emma Does Fashion folder, 
Then I've got my ASOS Real here, so I'll move that into my Reels and TikToks folder. And then we can watch it through. Let's check we're happy with it. Yeah, it's fine. Nothing special. <laughs> Yeah, so the whole thing is fine. Obviously, you're, you're just checking through for any, um, I don't know, any corruptness in the file, any weird glitches or anything like that. So we can now transfer it to our phones, happy in the knowledge that we don't have any strange technical issues going on there. Okay, so it's now time to post the reel that you've just filmed. So there's two different ways you can do this. You can either go across to where you post stories and select reel from there, or you can click the plus icon here on your profile page and click reel, and that will take you to this area. And then click on this little plus icon here where you can put pictures, and th not pictures, if you were on stories, you would be able to put pictures, but you can't for reels. So select the reel that you've just filmed, and then it was a little bit hidden there because I've got the white dressing table, but there's this little, icon here the two little um arrows pointing diagonally away from each other so if you click that there you go that's the scale icon it's a little bit easier to see now so that will make everything bigger and because i was in the middle of the shot it has put me roughly in the middle i don't know if you can move yeah you can't really move yourself about so you've got to make sure that you are framed properly so i was standing a little bit too far to my right so um, I'll have to be careful of that in the future, but it's fine, it's not a huge problem. So if you click add, it does take a little while. Okay, click added. So then you can see it comes up down here at the bottom of the screen. So you can click and view your video. Oh, it is a bit, um, yeah, I am a bit far off to the side, but it doesn't really matter. And then you've got all these little icons down here so you can add music. What should we go for? I don't, I'm not up on modern music. I'll have to just choose something I like. Um, I'll go for something really old school. Oh, oops, I did it again, it'd be good, because it'd be like, oops, I did another ASOS haul, whoops. So if you want to, you can choose a different parts of the song, but I just kind of usually go with whatever comes up first, because that's normally the chorus. So you can add stickers and things, you can add text. Text is one of the most useful ones. You can't do that at this point, actually. You have to wait until you're posting. But here is where you can, um, you can do, I don't know what that is. You can um, put a timer on there. I, I guess there's reasons you would want to do that. I don't know, but that looks like some sort of editing tool. And um, there's effects you can put on. So you can put like filters and things like that on there if you want to. I don't generally tend to do that. And you can speed it up or slow it down as needed. But I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm just gonna go straight to the next bit. And then that brings you to the point where you can then add text. So this looks very much like it does when you're or doing a story so you can download it again if you want to you can add um, stickers if you want to you can do little scribbles and you can add text which is generally the one that I tend to do I found that this one this style of text seems to work quite well so this is an ASOS haul so I'm just basically going to rate the outfits out of 10 so let's do for that orange dress um, orange dress I think probably three out of 10. It wasn't a very successful haul. That's just put it on the whole video rather than just on that part with the orange dress. The way that you can change that is, um, rather than, I always think that I need to select the text up here where it is on the screen, but actually you want to go down to this little bit down here and select it. So it was already selected. This is what it looks like when it's not selected. So if we tap that, it then goes white and you can see that you've got some options for cropping. So if I just pull that last one, back here to the orange dress and then we'll just keep it on the screen until we move to the next outfit and then that's the lilac jumper so we'll put our thoughts in on that one so you can then move that and when you're editing your um your other text will appear on there so don't worry about that it's not that it's gonna be on there the whole time so we then want this text to appear when the lilac jumper comes on screen there we go. And we want it to finish before the pink cord. Okay, so that is fine. Um, one thing that we probably need to do is also add another bit of text just saying ASOS all, and we can keep that on screen throughout the whole video. So if we type ASOS all, we'll put a little heart emoji as well. Let's try and work out the placement, let's put it here. And then you can see that's selected and we're just not gonna move any of the sliders. So that will be on screen the whole time. So unselect that and then you can view it and you can see that ASOS haul node doesn't move. So then when you're ready to post, you can then click this arrow. And one thing I did forget to do was to take a cover photo. 
but it doesn't really matter. Obviously, if you want it to fit into your grid a little bit better, you want to take a cover photo and you want to edit it in a way that fits into your grid really well, but I forgot to do that and <laughs> I'm, um, I'm not posting now anyway. I'm just showing you what to do for the purpose of this video. Now you come into your section where you can write a caption. You can also change to stories here. I don't know, so you can change, you can share to story. I don't know if you can then come back and write your real bits and then share your real, or if you kind of have to start all over again when you do a story. So we're not going to do that. We're going to write our caption, sneak peek of my YouTube video coming on Sunday. And I'm gonna save draft, but at this point you can click share. You could also take off also share to feed if you want to, if you don't want it to kind of ruin how your grid looks, but mostly I would just share it to my feed because people have got more chance of seeing it then. If you want to post this reel to TikTok as well and you have edited on iMovie, then there is a little trick you can do just to get the dimensions right before you post to TikTok because if you, post the video as it is to TikTok, it will just be in that kind of letterbox form, whereas um, on Instagram you can change the size from that form and you can turn it into a portrait, but you can't do that on TikTok as far as I can see. So instead what I do before I post it to TikTok is I go into Keynote on my Mac and select new document, start a new presentation, get rid of this stuff and then um, go to document and then you can change the um, slide size, so change that to custom slide size and then basically swap these around. So you're changing this to 1080 by 1920 and click OK. And then um, it brings up this kind of mobile phone screen sized slide. Then if you grab your reel and drag it into Keynote, which I've lost, there it is. So that's inserted the video and these lines will help you with your placement. So you just get that in the middle. That's a bit easy to see. You can drag these little squares at the sides of the video to get it in the right spot. So again, these grid lines will help you to make sure that it's in exactly the right place. And you can also move it around a bit if you find that you're so, I'm going a little bit too far to the right, whereas I can centralize myself a little bit more on Keynote. So I could have done this for my reel as well, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, so, once we've got that in the right place, you then click File and Export to Movie. And this bit where it says go to next slide after five seconds, change that to zero and same for go to next build after. And then click next. And then we'll call that a SOS TikTok one. So now that that has exported, so we've got ASOS TikTok one, but as you can see, it doesn't say .mp4, so we've got, I think this is a .mov file. So you just need to change that to mp4 before you try and upload it to TikTok, because TikTok won't accept that file type. So if you just type into Google, change mov file to mp4, then there are plenty of websites where you can do that. So just make sure you do that before you try and post to TikTok. Okay, so I can't convert my video to mp4 at the moment because my partner's uploading something and the internet won't work for me now. So I'm not going to actually post this TikTok, but I'm just going to show you very quickly how to do it on here. If we go to our TikTok app. In fact, I'll have to do mobile data because, because of the internet issue. So um, very, very easy to post to TikTok. You just go to the icon at the bottom and then select your video. So you can see this is completely the wrong shape, which I can't do anything about at the moment because of the internet problem. But as I've explained, all you need to do is go into Keynote and change it. I don't know how you can do it if you're not working on a Mac, um, but if you just have a little Google, I'm sure you'll be able to find some instructions. What you can do now is you can add some effects, so click next and that will process your video. And then that will take you to a page where you can add a filter if you want to. I mean, I don't generally use them to be honest for this sort of um, TikTok because obviously I want to show the clothes as they look, but I'm just showing you what you can do. You can record voiceover up here if you want to, underneath the filters there, but obviously we're gonna use music for this. So you can add sounds and click search. Go for your favourite sounds. If you've saved any favourites in TikTok or if you're new to TikTok, then one thing I quite like to do is go to TikTok Viral and use one of the songs from there or one of the sounds from there. Because if it's on there, then there's more chance of people seeing it. If it's a popular sound, um, but I don't know any of these songs really. 
Oh, it's a bit of Michael Beadle. So you can add effects and you can add like heart bubbles and things like that. I don't generally use that option. But one thing I do use is text. So if we go for classic, then we could do a very similar thing to what we did in our reel. I won't go through the whole thing because you've just seen it and it's a very similar process. Knit set from River Island. I can't remember what I said in the other one. Was it six out of 10 or something like that? If you want that on the whole video, you can just leave it as is and click next, or you can select it and then click set duration and then drag, much like we did for our reel. Just drag the, these sliders so that, oops, so that they only come on when the pink knit is on screen. We'll click next now. And then you describe your video. I think people generally say to use maybe three or four hashtags at most, which is obviously quite different from Instagram. You want to use all 30 on there. And then in describe your video, generally I don't see a lot of text. I don't know a great deal about TikTok, but I don't generally see people putting that much text on there. And then you can change all these down here. So if you want to, you can turn off comments, you can turn off stitch, which and duet, which both of which are where I think people can like respond to your video. And um, you can save it to your device as well, much like you can on Instagram. You can get it to automatically share to everything else. You can save it as a draft and then you can post. We're not gonna post it because it's the wrong size, um, as I've explained, but that is how you post to TikTok. I hope you found those tips helpful, guys. As I said, I am by no means an expert, but I just thought this might be useful for anyone that is brand new to using Instagram Reels or to using TikTok and just doesn't know where to start. So there's some tips there on the equipment that you can use, a lot of which you will already have access to, and how you can edit, how you can film, and the effects that you can use when you're posting. So I really hope that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time.